We continue on with chapter 7. Healing as the recognition of truth. Truth can only be recognized and need only be recognized. Inspiration is of the Holy Spirit and certainty is of God according to his laws. Both, therefore, come from the same source since inspiration comes from the voice for God and certainty comes from the laws of God. Healing does not come directly from God who knows his creations as perfectly whole, yet healing is still of God because it proceeds from his voice and from his laws. It is their result in a state of mind that does not know him. The state is unknown to him and therefore does not exist, but those who sleep are unaware. Because they are unaware, they do not know. The Holy Spirit must work through you to teach you he is in you. This is an intermediary step toward the knowledge that you are in God because you are part of him. The miracles the Holy Spirit inspires can have no order of difficulty because every part of creation is of one order. This is God's will and yours. The laws of God establish this, and the Holy Spirit reminds you of it. When you heal, you are remembering the laws of God and forgetting the laws of the ego. I said before that forgetting is merely a way of remembering better. It is therefore not the opposite of remembering when it is properly perceived. Perceived improperly, it induces a perception of conflict with something else, as all incorrect perception does. Properly perceived, it can be used as a way out of conflict, as all proper perception can. The ego does not want to teach everyone all it has learned, because that would defeat its purpose. Therefore, it does not really learn at all. The Holy Spirit teaches you to use what the ego has made, to teach the opposite of what the ego has learned. The kind of learning is as relevant as is the particular ability that was applied to the learning. All you need do is make the effort to learn, for the Holy Spirit has a unified goal for the effort. If different abilities are applied long enough to one goal, the abilities themselves become unified. This is because they are channelized in one direction, or in one way. Ultimately then, they all contribute to one result, and by so doing, their similarity rather than their differences is emphasized. All abilities should therefore be given over to the Holy Spirit, who understands how to use them properly. He uses them only for healing, because he knows you only as whole. By healing, you learn of wholeness, and by learning of wholeness, you learn to remember God. You have forgotten Him, but the Holy Spirit understands that your forgetting must be translated into a way of remembering. The ego's goal is as unified as the Holy Spirit's, and it is because of this that their goals can never be reconciled in any way, or to any extent. The ego always seeks to divide and separate. The Holy Spirit always seeks to unify and heal. As you heal, you are healed, because the Holy Spirit sees no order of difficulty in healing. Healing is the way to undo the belief in differences, being the only way of perceiving the Sonship as one. This perception is therefore in accord with the laws of God even in a state of mind that is out of accord with his. The strength of right perception is so great that it brings the mind into accord with his, because it serves his voice, which is in all of you. To think you can oppose the will of God is a real delusion. The ego believes that it can, and that it can offer you its own, quote, will, as a gift. You do not want it. It is not a gift. It is nothing at all. God has given you a gift that you both have and are. 
When you do not use it, you forget that you have it. By not remembering it, you do not know what you are. Healing, then, is a way of approaching knowledge by thinking in accordance with the laws of God and recognizing their universality. Without this recognition, you have made the laws meaningless to you. Yet the laws are not meaningless, since all meaning is contained by them and in them. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, because that is where the laws of God operate truly, and they can operate only truly because they are the laws of truth. But seek this only, because you can find nothing else. There is nothing else. God is all in all in a very literal sense. All being is in him who is all being. You are therefore in him since your being is his. Healing is a way of forgetting the sense of danger the ego has induced in you by not recognizing its existence in your brother. This strengthens the Holy Spirit in both of you because it is a refusal to acknowledge fear. Love needs only this invitation. It comes freely to all the sonship, being what the sonship is. By your awakening to it, you are merely forgetting what you are not. This enables you to remember what you are. And from the workbook, Lesson 48. There is nothing to fear. The idea for today simply states a fact. It is not a fact to those who believe in illusions, but illusions are not facts. In truth, there is nothing to fear. It is very easy to recognize this, but it is very difficult to recognize it for those who want illusions to be true. Today's practice periods will be very short, very simple, and very frequent. Merely repeat the idea as often as possible. You can use it with your eyes open at any time and in any situation. It is strongly recommended, however, that you take a minute or so whenever possible to close your eyes and repeat the idea slowly to yourself several times. It is particularly important that you use the idea immediately should anything disturb your peace of mind. The presence of fear is a sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength. The awareness that there is nothing to fear shows that somewhere in your mind, though not necessarily at a place you recognize as yet, you have remembered God and let His strength take the place of your weakness. The instant you are willing to do this, there is indeed nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. So today we sink deep inside the mind, seeking first the Kingdom of God, opening to the awareness that there is nothing but this that we can find. Literally, there is nothing else. The Kingdom of Heaven is identity, is Christ. And this is the truth. This is the reason why there is nothing to fear. Today we ask to forget everything 
that we are not. Today we ask to remember the truth of I amness, our very being in God, who is all being. We sink inward past all the fears that seem to be about the things of the world, the circumstances, people, unwanted outcomes. Seeming outcomes of the world in which fear has been projected. Today we let them go and sink deep into the peace, the love and the stillness that is our inheritance. From this place of stillness we can watch any thoughts go by, thoughts of the future thoughts of the past, any thought of time and space. We watch them go by, fade and disappear. Nothing can hold us back today. Nothing but peace attracts our mind. Peace eternal. And the strength of peace rises. Truly Today is the day that we can experience. There is nothing to fear. <laughs>